Hey everybody, Young Grasshopper here. Welcome to the Cliffside Bunker in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. And this is my solo run through. I'm playing 3G40 Tournament Edition. It's a variant I created for my tournament in 2022. Let's take a look at our new order of play. In this episode, we're going to be doing United Kingdom Europe Turn 1. And we're going to get into what they have their options and what they're dealing with of course the last video we did japan turn one i want to do some house cleaning and talk about that and a few things that i forgot to mention but let's go to the comments take a look at the comments of our last video so wayne daly first says interesting position of the fleet i would never have thought of that I would have built the factory in China first round, so yeah, that might come back to haunt me. We'll we'll wait and see. Bill Calloway, around the 27 minute mark, it looks like you should have taken off two Chinese infantry on Yunnan, but you only took off one, or did I miss something? If I'm right, you should reroll the single Chinese infantry because you will likely get a Japanese infantry back. So I did know that I had a little bit of a hiccup there, but I kind of corrected it. Um, while playing so Japan's first rolls they got two Chinese infantry Chinese got one and then in the second combat round Japan got the last two and China ended up rolling another one so it all worked out proper in the end I did have a little bit of a, a gaff there when I was chipping out so Jack Sorrells Thanks for answering. It's a long one. Really long. So basically, um, I just wanted to get to where he says, maybe I haven't read this one. How did I reply? Right, okay. So Jack is uh, concerned about the validity of the Pacific Island token for both sides and I just in my reply explained to him how it's actually pretty doable and in my turn to Japan I'm going to talk or even in my turn one US I'm going to talk about that Pacific Island token a lot of people think that it's too hard it can't be achieved but if you look here I explained that if you place four American transports off Caroline with four American infantry in Caroline then place three UK transports off Queensland with three UK infantry in Queensland it's an automatic allied Pacific token threat so it's not as far-fetched of a token as a lot of people Jack's not the first a lot of people have expressed that that's almost an impossible thing but I think as people start to think the game out over there on the Pacific they'll see that it's not that bad um, Graham Martin just uh, uh, explains and it uh, answers a question in my video about how some comments haven't been showing up. So I'm not in my studio. You can see those recommended videos over there. But um, thanks a lot, Graham, for that. Heavenly Riley, uh, good show. I think you really did a good job putting Japan in a position to become an absolute monster. Cool. The Allies will have a super hard time to defend against that. We'll see. Um, obviously, I'm playing myself, so... I'm going to try not to get too stumped by what the other side is doing. <laughs> That's the tricky thing about playing solo. Uh, Robert Steiner didn't see that move to Pelo, but opens up many options. Really makes the Allied player thinking which direction Japan will go. Personally, I think I would have still bought the minor IC because you always need ground units in Chinese territories no matter which way you go. So true. I mean, um, the kids online these days, I think, on the interweb, they're they're buying a lot of um, transports for Japan. Uh, we'll see how that affects my sort of mainland ground and pound by not getting that on right away. But interesting move to Palo. I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Ireland haven't seen that before. Filing that move away for future use. That's pretty inspiring considering Hambone's a great player. Um, I may have taught him something. Uh, Gregory Brown, I like your idea of moving the fleet to the Caroline Islands on the first move. It opens up the Pacific to more options. Like 
you I've been holding my fleet close to the Asian shoreline waiting for time to strike I will need to try a couple of times to see how I do with this now um, to be honest I did mention in my video that we first when we started playing this game way back in 2011 2012 we were doing that a lot but it was actually Pink Panzer in our gaming group a few years ago that um, made that move to Caroline to put pressure and force the Allies back a step. So kudos to him. We've been actually playing with that for a while. So thanks for the comments, guys. I just want to next bring up something that happened in Japan. And it has to do with the transports and, and whatnot. So this transport, I explained, came from this sea zone. Picked up the Okinawa infantry and a artillery and came down here um now these two one of them came from here picked up the artillery i left behind and came here and complemented the infantry already on this island with that transport now the third transport came from here and it picked up an artillery from Tokyo and picked up Iwo Jima and came here. Now, what I should have done, because I got a little bit of cross-eyed there, this transport really should be in here. Um, because it came from here, my path would have been right in here. Now, this is fine. I mean, this is a nice position. A lot of people have been interested in this move. Um, I'm not doing anything crazy sneaky or anything it's just um obviously these ships and these ships can only reach here i wanted to use this infantry and this infantry to sort of um, strip the islands for more important things <clears throat> but this honestly should be here because it came from up here coming down this path reason being is because it's caroline there's a naval base there um that's better positioning even though this is fine it's not a huge mistake I mean um, a lot of people are interested in this because of the range so we can get back up here we can get to here we can get to here we can get here or here we can even get here we can even get here from there so there's still a lot of good range but ideally this in a perfect round should be in here now just to reiterate a few things that <clears throat> I probably didn't explain very well in my last video. I wanted to talk about the positives for Japan. And a lot of people think that because they're faced with this new combined nation that it's just so much more challenging. But you really got to look through, look between the lines to see the positives. And the positives, I explained a little bit, they don't have to worry about Anzac or UK attacking them like they would in out of box and needing to cover up things like loan transports and things like this in case this comes up and wants to declare war and hit so they got the freedom to sort of if they're not going to bring them into the war pacific allies they can spot their transports or their fleet any way they want they're going to be safe that's a huge positive for positioning turn one um secondly we talked about this move here and being able to back them up um, backing up units you know this coming here but also to using this factory for another three land units I mean the UK Pacific has money and they would like nothing more than to buy a factory over in Persia and place some big units on Calcutta but by doing this they kind of are forced to put units here um, so that's a good positional move for that but also too when it comes to leaving the Americans out of the war and the UK Pacific declares war when they can at the beginning of their third round they're going to collect a lot of money for national objectives for example they're going to get five for this five for this and five for this that's 15 on top of whatever they're um, controlling 27 plus whatever they gain in here so they're going to be in the 40 plus mark and that's a lot of money 
And but I want to remind people about the 10 IPC national objective for Japan when it comes to trade with America. Um, it's not going to feel so bad that 15 IPCs when now Japan can jump on these islands and attack the UK Pacific all the while leaving America out of the war and collect that 10 IPCs. But the one that I really wanted to mention um, is the fact of this Burma Road buildup. A lot of the times in G40, an experienced player will take the UK and with China and with the UK with a declaration of war early, come in here and create this large stack right here in Yunnan. And this has become a real roadblock for Japan in out-of-box games. It's hard to crack because it's hard to get land units here early to deal with it. And even though the UK Pacific declares war, possibly leaves America out of the war, the stack here is just so daunting for Japan. We call it the Burma buildup. That's less so in this variant, just simply because of the declaration of war restriction. That can't happen. And it's the should be the plan of Japan to just continue through here and just negate them combining their stacks and forces here, making it almost impossible to get through. Now, that's all I wanted to say about that. I wanted to get into the UK Europe turn, turn one, and we're going to take a look at everything that they have going on. And Germany really did have a good first round. Um, they didn't lose any aircraft. They still have four out of five submarines on the board and we're dealing with a lot of pressure. They have a new factory here. There's a fighter here protecting this for a three plane scramble. There's two fighters here now making this amphibious assault even more risky, but there's not a whole lot that UK can do. Um, now they're faced with losing a token to North Africa simply because um, Japan may keep America out of the war long enough for them to achieve that. But we also don't want to do anything rash or foolish to make our own capital vulnerable. I would say out of the two, North Africa and Sea Lion, I would say let them take North Africa as long as you don't lose your capital. Now, that's the one you want to keep. You don't want to lose your capital. Therefore, we need to be really disciplined in how we strip London to go do other things. And we're not going to sacrifice our capital just to preserve the Africa token. Because if they take the Africa token, we can still collect an income because we still have our capital. But also, too, in the late, late rounds when America's in the war, even though Africa has fallen and that token is given up, we can now, uh, with our income from holding our capital along with America's help, begin to pound a way to get our own Africa token once the Axis have been there, got what they wanted, and are probably leaving and dealing with the Russians now. So we're going to get into all of that. And I'm going to turn off now and go into my combat rounds. Just want to say thanks to Contangle for helping me out, especially on the Europe side, because really are doing a lot of new things and I'm on board let's check it out be right back okay guys that's enough about Japan we're gonna get into the United Kingdom turn one we're purchasing new units I don't know how many infantry I'm gonna get yet but that's okay we're in stage one we can change it we can get right into our combat movement now we can't get into resolve combat uh, and change our purchases we have to do it here in stage one but let's take a look at our combat i hope i don't forget to finish that off um let's get into our combat here take a look now germany is strong they had a good first round we're dealing with all kinds of stuff the uk europe was left with the 111 fleet but we lost ships there we lost ships down here now we're dealing with four out of five german submarines in the atlantic plus of course that cruiser up there They've got 15 total aircraft, all in good position, two here, one here to provide a three-plane scramble, one tactical bomber there, and then the rest here. Now, bear with me. Um, I'm going to discuss something that 
I'm not familiar with, but I'm going to try. So I consider the Mediterranean theater extremely exciting. Now, how you handle the Mediterranean theater of war can tell a lot about your experience level. For example, my first run at these videos way back when I started my channel, I was encouraging people to do the Taranto raid to get rid of this battleship, this cruiser, this transport. Now, that was great back in 2012, but different things started to come along. Um, there was the Middle Earth strategy. There was the possibility of taking both of these out to Brook and this. I eventually settled on something like, I don't care what my teammate does as long as it's either this or this. Um, I never ever like sending my carrier this way through the Suez, although some of my club members like doing that. Um, I always find that it ends up floating around here in the Indian Ocean not doing much for the whole game. It's better to kind of use it now to help out, to not let Italy gobble up half of Africa. Um, but obviously we are dealing with pressure for the Africa token and I want to talk about a chess move. So when the same players are fighting over the same space on a chess board, what will happen is a white bishop will come in, take a black pawn, and then a black knight will come in and take that white bishop. And then a white knight will come in and take that black knight. And then a black bishop will come in and take that white knight. And they're fighting over the same space and four units are gone. It's kind of like that here at this particular evolution in which we've arrived at. And a lot of uh, this has played its way out on the online games and I'm learning it. I want to get better. And I just think that the Mediterranean theater of war is just really exciting for a lot of different reasons. So where are we at now? Well, we, you remember the three fighter purchase for Germany, right? Well, that was all designed to be part of this first move for that space, that white bishop for the black pawn. That's the first move. It's a counter to a counter to a counter. And what is supposed to happen now is the British fleet now comes here. And I talked to Contango about it, about all of our options. We're not just going to do things script by script. But I really think it's the best thing to do. But not only that, I do want to show you guys what has been going on. I have done this move before, although not against so much Axis strength coming at it. But we'll explain that we have an opportunity to maybe take out half or more of the German Air Force. But let's get into our combat movement. That's more of a non-combat. But if you, if we talk about taking this and this in on the Italian destroyer and transport, uh, that is part of the whole counter, especially the naval, I'm sorry, the air base purchase. Now, why are we talking about saving London and buying an air base? Well, I was a little uncomfortable with it, but I'm fine with trying things out. Um, we'll see what it looks like at the end of the round, but simply uh, I would like nothing more than to try and get land units on there. But I understand the strategic thinking behind the Gibraltar buildup, and it's basically to entice something called an Algeria snake. So there's all kinds of these things going on online. We need to catch up, and I think it plays into this tournament edition the same way as it does out of box. But we're coming in on this with two aircraft. Of course, we don't have our cruiser, but we do have to get rid of these two subs, and we're going to do it with a destroyer. Bring that down. The bomber. And one, two, three, 
fighters. We'll just see what we can get. How does this one go? One, two, three, so that can go, no problem. So that's gonna be non-combat up here. The fleet, non-combat. And down here, that's a combat. We got this combat. Now, what else can we do other than those things? Let's take a look at Africa. We can't hit this simply because we're not going to take out enough units with our units. Okay, it's about the counter as well. When we come here, we got a better chance of taking out more expensive units from the Axis than if we were to do this. Plus, we're putting pressure on them. And you'll see how coming here and perhaps taking away more than half of the German Air Force or possibly even them leaving it alone and getting back is going to help us protect London in the long run. So... These are all going to be des designated for non-combat. And I don't think we have a combat against these or this. It's too strong. Now, we could win this with an amphibious assault and aircraft. But again, we're going to be so bare in Africa. It's just going to be a quick gimme for these two transports plus whatever else Italy purchases to get those Africa, I mean, any units left over are demolished by an amphibious assault. So it's back and forth, back and forth. And we have to make sure that we come out either even or on top. Now, we don't have to worry about anything over here. That's the beauty about these tournament edition rules. Is that the UK Europe player can focus just on London and on Africa many many times in a G40 game we're waiting a long time for the UK player to finish because they wrap their brains around a totally unique situation happening in the med that takes a lot of time and strategy and then have to deal with something over here in Burma and in India and we no longer have to worry about that in fact we are doing the UK Europe turn while Japan is doing their turn. Anyways, that's the second turn block, right? So let Japan do their business over here while we are purchasing our units, doing our combat, possibly resolving combat. All the while Japan is doing their turn. That's how we get the fast rounds. I don't want to forget anything. This is kind of I wouldn't say new to me just simply because I have done it before, but we have to be so careful about the enemy and looking at what they can do. And ideally, I mean, it's just a build up, but we don't want to miss move something. I perhaps maybe have miss moved this, but it's not a huge error. Um, we may have to leave something vulnerable in Cairo just because we won't have the blockers and we'll be all right here but hopefully we can force a Italy's hand for Algeria because the Germans need Algeria to land in they could use Spain or build some aircraft carriers here but the first option is Algeria and we're going to do what we can to build that up and you'll see that but uh, just scanning making sure that I'm not missing any other attacks we've used all of our aircraft these are not going to attack this obviously and our our destroyer is not going here it's coming down here we got all those aircrafts just simply because they're going to end up in this area anyway so now we'll just designate this one as coming from scotland and these two coming from london all right so it should go quick, like I said, because we're dealing with just Africa and the Atlantic. We don't have to deal with anything over on this side. And I think our combat movements are done. I think our combat movements are done. So we've got two battles. 
Now, I know that it seems strange right now, but it'll all come or fold together when we finish our non-combat movements and how we create the environment to sort of just taunt the axis to hit us, okay? And now we're going to have to finish our purchase new units. So it's 15, I believe, for the air base. And we have 10 IPCs left. Let's just go ahead and get some more land units on London. So we'll call it uh, 6. And there's no point in buying an artillery unless we keep London and use transports. But we have a buck back. I'm going to keep, I'm going to buy another infantry and keep that buck back. So it'll be four infantry in an air base and keep a dollar. Is that right? So we've got that plus the 12 correct. So a dollar left over. So let's get into this. And I'm at this dice tray now. Wouldn't you know it's all filled with all kinds of obstacles let's just put that there and of course my computer's in the way that's fine we'll just move that we're going to get into our combat movement i'm sorry our resolve combat and of course i gotta come all the way down here to get some dice not prepared today i had a long day at work but you know Spending time to come down here and get dice, I'll deal with. I'd rather that than make an error in my turn, my UK turn. So, tell me what you guys think. Was there another combat? I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think there was another combat. No. So we are done stage two and we're just going to bite the bullet and go into stage, sorry, he's done stage one going into stage two. So are there any scramble opportunities? No. Okay, so let's go into resolve combat and let's get this one out of the way. Let's get this tough one out of the way. What we'd really love to do is hit on the first combat round and not lose a plane. So, a fighter, a British fighter against the Italian destroyer. Oh. One at four now for the tactical. It's combined with the fighter. We need a four or less. And we get it. Oh, thank goodness. All right. The Italian destroyer to shoot down a British plane. This is huge. Oh. And I'm cheering because I'm playing the UK in this round. That's the way we got to do it. So, excellent. These two boats are gone. And we keep two aircraft. Everything is vital here. Everything is vital for this Gibraltar build-up. One at two. Four at three. One at four. Okay, so one at two, miss. Four at three, look at that. Are you kidding me? We missed everything. I thought for sure this was gonna be the one that was the easy. And we get one sub. Out of all that, we get one sub. Now, we're gonna see two Dice at one to kill a destroyer. If this happens, that means those aircraft cannot stick around to kill the last sub. Oh. So, good. One sub gone, and we'll do it all over again. One at two. We need better rolls in this later rounds, but as long as we get what we need. Four at three. Oh, yeah. Much better, much better. 
So one at two, I'm sorry, one at one for the last sub. Well, it was a little bit nervous, but we got everything we came for. And that is the combat movement. That was the resolve combat. Now the interesting thing, we're going to get into our non-combat movements for UK Europe. We're really under the hammer here. Um, I'm just really impressed with this turn one Germany and just how effective it is, especially scaring off the UK fleet like it's doing. Now I do have an alternative strategy, although it's very gimmicky. It's more my own individual strategy. I call it peacocking, but we're not going to get into anything funky like that here. Maybe I'll do a separate video talking about it, but um, let's get into the non-combat movement now. The non-combat movement. Be right back. Okay, guys, so I have finished the non-combat moves. Let's take a look at what I've done. Let's start up here in Canada. So obviously I pushed the infantry and artillery into Quebec. Here in the homeland, we moved that mechanized infantry through Scotland into this pro-allied territory just simply because we want to get our head start on the diplomacy token. That's part of it. Hopefully it can get back. Now obviously that German transport can land in Scotland, but we'll see. So the destroyer from 111 comes in here to block. To block any sea units for these two ships. Now if the Germans really want this, they're going to send aircraft. They're going to need to. So this is our Gibraltar buildup along with Algeria. And I'll show you why, but it all came from here and moved through this. Thank goodness we didn't lose any units here. Thank goodness we didn't lose any units here. So a good round for the UK, Europe, considering what we wanted to accomplish. Now the five fighters, the one from here and the four from here, give us this two planes on the carrier with three fighters in Gibraltar. The transport from Egypt came and picked up the two units from Malta into Algeria and the transport from 109 brought down two infantry. Our bomber lands here and our tactical bomber lands here. Over here in Egypt we brought um, we, we put up a blocker kept that there for Alexandria of course I think we're doing okay I mean this infantry came up so now we have three two one and one and I would prefer the Italians fight over this rather than just get a free walk to try and now get at Cairo in a double pincer type of move so hopefully these two guys can give the Italians hell these guys moved up here now the destroyer from 71 came this way I just think that it's gonna in the long run be more beneficial getting into the Atlantic than anything they might be able to accomplish over here remember we still have this to combine with this but multinational ships are not very strong maybe they're strong on defense but there's not enough Navy over here to warrant having a UK Europe, a French and a UK Pacific fleet. So that's why I decided to move it over here. Now, what are we doing? What are we trying to accomplish? Well, our non-combat movements are over. So let's take a look. We're going to place units. So we're going to get this air base now, of course, on Gibraltar. So that's going to provide the three plane scramble right there. Now I doubt that anything's going to come after this. They're going to definitely come after this and possibly this. But the three plane scramble of course is here for this. But we have an option if they decide for whatever reason to go after that. I don't think they will. Why Algeria? Well the Italians are going to need to try and provide... A landing spot for the German aircraft so if they don't do that 
then not all German aircraft can make it and we'll count it out. I mean, obviously we should be looking at their options right now, but I know that this is what I've wanted to do. And again, thanks to Contangle for the finer points of this. I'm really trying to understand what is being done online these days. So there's a couple of options. We'll talk about it in the next video when Italy goes, but they can either come here and try and give Germany, Algeria as a landing spot, or they can go into Spain, which has its own problems and consequences, but they can take out the 6th Infantry here and provide that landing spot, or come here and deal with this. The odds might be the same or less, I'm not sure, so tell me in the comments, guys, where you would provide that landing spot. Would it be Algeria or would it be Spain? But the good news is it's going to require a lot of amphibious assault forces, which means that we could probably consider Cairo safe for now. So these are the finer points of that chess scenario I was telling you about. <clears throat> Let's go over it again, but this time I'm going to use uh, Germans for black and UK for white. So the black bishop takes out the white pawn. That was the three plane purchase. And now from here coming here and building this air base, this is the white knight taking out that black bishop. And of course now the Italians are going to try and take a black knight to take out that white knight. And this is the kind of back and forth and a lot of people might say that this is scripted. I don't like playing this game because you just got to go through the motions. But, you know, chess has been around for centuries and it's still extremely popular. There's still a lot of strategy involved. Like, for example, you know, why am I going to hit this with the German aircraft? Well, probably because there's no cruiser. It was destroyed here. And this destroyer couldn't come in as well. And so the odds for the German aircraft, which didn't lose any, so, so there's 15. So it's pretty ripe for most great players online to hit that with their 15 aircraft with one less destroyer, one less cruiser. So of course... I'm going to hit that to see how it goes. Now it all depends on Italy providing that landing. And we'll see how many aircraft can get in if they can't provide that landing. But we also have a German factory here that can build aircraft carriers that for the units that cannot reach can land on the aircraft carriers and purchase their way into getting those legal landing spots. We'll take a look at all their options. Of course, Italy is coming up next. All right. So it goes fast for the UK. I thought it was going to be more mentally exhausting. But the fact that we only have these little pockets of units to deal with. And again, we don't have to worry about this. If you guys aren't even coming to my tournament but are still playing G40, try this variant for all the benefits that it provides. Faster game rounds. You know, um, the way that in the forum thread, and I'll provide a link, the way in the forum thread uh, shows you how to assign players allows for these turn blocks to really work if you properly assign the nations to specific players. And again, the UK Europe not having to worry about this over here and this being it's a whole new nation. The whole table is not waiting for one person to do many different things on the entire map. And it just allows you to focus on what's important and it's the Mediterranean. You don't want to stop thinking about the Mediterranean to come over here and do something with your Burma forces because you're not so invested over here as you are concerned about what's going on in here. So we did spend money that could have been used on, on 
London for that air base, but the amount of aircraft needed here to deal with that, and we'll see how the rolls go. I mean, that's another reason why this game is not scripted. It's because the rolls can form all kinds of scenarios different than what you thought might happen. So, Germany, of course, is at the buffet. Ready to just dish up at the all-you-can-eat buffet. They see all kinds of good stuff. Noodles, chow mein, pumpkin pie. All kinds of stuff to hit for Germany. But first, what's crucial is what is Italy going to do? What is Italy going to do? So, let's finish purchasing, sorry, placing our new units. So, there's a little bit of something something to help out on the beaches. On the landing ground we got our one IPC back so place new units non combat moves resolve combat so I think we're ready to move into stage three now stage three we're gonna collect our income we didn't go up anything now I don't have national objective cards in front of me for the UK Europe because they're all new. I'm using my national objective cards from my Utah deck which is out of box and the national objectives for UK Europe and UK Pacific have all changed. Everything else is the same for everybody else but those two nations have changed. So let's count up what we're going to get for national objectives UK Europe. Now I'll just make the comparison in out of box if UK Europe controls all their original territories they're going to get 5 IPC national objective but in this game if they control all their originally controlled territories on the continent of Africa they get 5 IPCs and if they control all originally controlled territories outside of the continent of Africa like Gibraltar, Malta, Cyprus, Scotland, Iceland, London, they're going to get another 5 IPC. So there's $10 total for the UK Europe this round. So I'm hoping that things like this, things like this balance the game for the great players who are bored winning as the Axis and board losing as the Allies when they play like-minded great players. So continuing on, we didn't collect, we didn't gain any new territories. Didn't gain any new territories, so it's still 28. And sorry for going slow, guys. I want to make sure I do everything correctly. So we're looking at 34 IPCs for the UK Europe. 34. That should help. That should definitely help stave off any kind of sea lion attempt. But of course, it's too early to tell. And again, that North Africa token is still vulnerable. Now, next is resolve convoy raids. And we do have a situation up here where a German submarine is going to convoy us. And there's a total of three IPCs that can be convoyed. And of course, I put everything in my dice tray again, thinking I was done. So, one submarine is going to get two dice. We're looking for three or less. Three or less to take three IPCs. Ooh, and they get all three. Look at that. Five IPCs. They get all three from the UK. That's actually going to hurt. So 31 IPCs UK Europe has to spend. 31. So good convoy raid from that U-boat. So I believe everything is done. Hope you enjoyed that guys and again just like the German turn one doing things that make me uncomfortable a little bit I'm 
determined to become better at this game. And therefore, I need to try new things, especially the things that are working for the great players. And it's uh, a lot to digest, but I love what I'm seeing so far. I love these strategies. I can see how it causes a lot of anxiety for different nations. And it might just be the best use for these pieces, especially when things like this are done. And this, and plus this, and the dice rolls have been good for each nation. We didn't have to roll a lot there, but those were really important battles. And just going back to our victory token, our victory objective ideas. I mean, as the allies, we're not really focused on anything just yet. But you do want to make that move turn one. It's when you can easily. Not saying it's going to get back. But last thing you want is to be on the brink of getting that diplomacy token. Again, go to the link in the description box, guiding you to the rules forum, showing you all the different uniqueness. And be on the brink of that diplomacy token and not have that pro-allied neutral territory up there when you could have easily have gone and gotten it. I'm not saying we're going for it, not saying that it's possible in this game, but by getting that, you're giving yourself a chance to at least keep it in your radar. So we can't focus on our own Africa token this early. Absolutely not. What we're doing is making sure that we don't lose London. That's the biggest thing we need to be concerned about. And hopefully, by doing this, hopefully we've set ourselves up to roll well and take a lot of Luftwaffe down. All right. Cheers, guys. Hope you enjoyed that. Um, thanks for the comments, everybody. May all your rolls be ones. Take care. And next, of course, Italy in round one of my solo run-through playing 3G40 Tournament Edition. Take care, guys.